Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to Alex Morono up against Matt Samuelsberger at UFC 277 this weekend. Alex, a lot of people had an awful 2021. You absolutely smashed it. How good was your year and how nice is it just to be on that winning streak? Yeah, man, it was awesome. Uh, it was a little unexpected only because two of the three fights I took on short notice, and uh, which was great. And uh, thankfully, sir, I, I run a gym. I'm actually sitting here right now. And, uh, and, and business was actually pretty good. 2020 was a rough one, but 2021 people wanted to get back back at it and train. So like a, a good chunk of the year was spent making sure, you know, the actual business side of the gym was, was you know, th thriving and, and, you know, against all odds it was. And it, and it made for a, a fun fight year as well. So, man, last year was the best year I've ever had in the UFC. And uh, and it's, it's, it's cool because going into this fight camp, my coach was like, you know, Coach Safe at Florida, he was like, Morono, you know, you're getting comfortable. We got to change that. So this was a hard fight camp. This was the hardest fight camp I've had in recent memory. What stands out about it? What have you been working on? Uh, it's just kind of the, the intensity of the training. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, I had a couple of my training partners have to pull out of the fights. But that just goes to show how hard we've been working. But uh, but and then, and then one of my training partners is fighting the week after me. So it was just a lot of consistent sessions with nothing but big, strong welterweights. And it's been good, man. It's been tough. It was super cool seeing your post-fight interview last time out, seeing that moment with your dad. I think everybody can relate to moments like that. What did that mean to you? Was that like uh, up there with the best moments in your career, do you reckon? Yeah, yeah. It was just cool to be able to, you know, give my dad a cool experience. You know, he's the one who got me interested in the watching fights. And, uh, you know, he's a little bit older now. He definitely doesn't travel anymore. So, you know, it was just like the, you know, right, right place, right time. And, uh, and you know, and I won the fight. That's, that's a big, that's a big part of it, too. It's always good to go out there and perform. But, you know, that was something I could definitely cross off of, like, my list of things to do. I know he was really appreciative of that. And uh, and it was cool, you know, it was cool getting the win right in front of him. Plus, watching fights at the Apex is awesome. Like, every seat is cage side. You know, the, they're not super strict with, you know, like, where you can go and stuff. I mean, it, it's cool. The UFC runs a really cool program there at, at the Apex. If anyone's not been there for a fight, it, it's worth the tickets. Awesome. And you got this winning streak up and running by that win over Cowboy. Were you pleased now that he's hung it up that you got the chance to fight him? Yeah, yeah. Anytime, you know, MMA ever comes up in like a public conversation and people aren't super, you know, familiar with, you know, like my career, I always ask them, like, you guys know who Cowboy Cerrone is? And everyone says yes. And I'm like, cool, I got to fight him. And it's, it's just like a really good kind of like jumping off point. You know, I have a poster up in my gym uh, that I'm on with Cowboy. And uh, here it's, it's actually, it's the one right, right up there. Oh, I know you can't... Piece of history right there. I love it. Yeah, it's just, it just, it just makes it really easy to, you know, let people know exactly what I do and the level I do it at. And, uh, and Cal was the man, you know, I, I, I was a fan of every one of his fights other than the time I fought. I was rooting for myself on that one. But, uh, but yeah, it was cool. Even his matchup with Jim Miller was a, was a good fight, good matchup. It was cool. I was really, really happy to see him, uh, you know, you know, call it a career and, I'm sure he'll go make a bunch of money doing movies and stuff. It's interesting. We're going through a little bit of a transition right now with people like Cowboy hanging it up. Like those guys that you were probably watching 15 years ago, some of those guys are still fighting. Uh, who is the one person you would say in a similar note to Cowboy? Who is there anyone that's a legend that you would love to fight before they go? Yeah, you know, I was actually talking to my striking coach. He's one of my better friends too. We just watched him fights forever, been doing this forever. And, uh, you know, there's there's a handful of guys who are still still competitive, still active. That would be awesome. And, and you, know, you know who they are. You know, it's like Matt Brown and Robbie Lawler. You know, just any of those guys who have, you know, been in the UFC for a long time. Like, those fights would always be super fun. And uh, so, you know, if, if, if a cool opportunity does present itself down the road, awesome. And if not, I just wish those type of guys the best. It's an interesting sport in the sense that I'm sure you've been getting the love for this win streak, but I'm sure you perform brilliantly and not come out with the win in your career. How much do you put into the value of winning or getting a number against your name? For example, you might be thinking about ranking soon, right? What does this sport mean to you in that sense? Yeah. In MMA, it's important to understand this, but like winning is everything, you know, it, it really is, you know, when you win, that's when you get the opportunities, you make double the money, you know, everyone wants to do interviews, just everything like your stock goes up. My, my business at the gym picks up and, and when you lose it's the opposite you know you're, you're sent back to square one no one really cares i mean it, it's it's a rough sport it makes the wins that much more valuable but it's only because the losses are so 
you know, kind of catastrophic. And uh, so, you know, every decision made, you know, going into fight camp in terms of the arrest and nutrition training, you know, everything is to increase that win percent chance as much as possible. That's why I love having Coach Safe as my coach and in my corner because I feel like my, my, my win percentage just drastically goes up with, you know, with, with him kind of guiding, guiding me through this, you know, through this journey. And, uh, and, and yeah, winning MMA is everything. And if you have a different mindset, you're, you're fighting at a huge disadvantage. What's the first thing that goes through your mind when you see Matt Samuelsberger on the contract and UFC 277? How are you planning to make it four in a row? Yeah, uh, I actually didn't expect to get on this fight card. You know, I, I, I'm on Tapology every day, all day. And I just look at fight cards. I look at the welterweight matchups. I look at any openings. And I was really hoping to fight in Dallas. But, you know, there were like 14 fights booked. And I, you know, and then I know Sean Shelby asked if, if we wanted to get on that card. And I was like, absolutely, I'll fight anybody. And uh, when they sent Matt Simmelsberg, I actually knew exactly who he was. I had watched all of his fights. And even when I watched him fight, I was like, I'll probably end up fighting this guy. And uh, so I was ready for that. I'm familiar with the style. I know, like, the, the type of person he is. He's, he's like, one of, like, the respectful dudes who's just a super hard worker. And those guys you got to watch out for. So I made sure to, you know, to work extra hard this camp and, and be ready. And it'll be a fun fight. You know, I got no, uh, no bad blood with the dude at all by any means. And I know he's going to he's gonna come to fight hard, and I got to make sure to, to match and, and beat that pace. Where are you stronger than him? Uh, I think technically, uh, I have been in the game a lot longer. I know I have, you know, better grappling, I, more technical striking. He's powerful, and you don't have to be super advanced for MMA. And uh, so I think he plays his to his strengths really well. You know, so I have few expectations for this fight. You know, like in his last fight, I know he was shooting in a bunch and doing some wrestling you know, had some top control time. So I'm just, just looking to be a vet and, and just try to win the fight, you know, no matter where it goes. How ambitious are you feeling right now about your goals? Are we going to see you fight a top 15 guy? Maybe not this year, but next year. I mean, yeah, yeah. Whatever the UFC offers. I, uh, I'm not too particular about the rankings, you know, that's cool. But like, like, you know, like, like a lot of guys have said, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting paid the same no matter what. So I almost prefer the more entertaining fight than the than you know the higher ranked fight especially you know styles make fights i was like uh, exciting fights so you know whatever but you know i'm five contracts deep in the ufc now i'm getting paid really well so honestly man i don't care i'll, I'll do whatever they whatever they want that's great to hear i'm glad to hear that man uh how did you feel about uh hamza being nate diaz's last fight you know what i i wish there was a a, a a just a consistent story on on the matchups you know i just watched a dana white press conference after the contender fight this morning and he was like booking fights with nate's not as easy as you think um i, I think that's a, a fun fight to watch um i think everyone wants to see nate kind of go out you know against like another vet against a fight he can win because i mean look at the odds you know no one's no one's giving him credit to win and but it is nate you know it's not going to be the easiest fight in the world but i think hamza could easily out wrestle and I just, I think that's what we'll see. So like at one, at, at one, you know, on one end of the coin, you know, one side of the coin, it's, it's not the most competitive matchup, but two, it's also Nate. He'll be main eventing. I'm sure he'll be making a couple million bucks for that fight. So same thing. Good for him. It's kind of a strange matchup. They're like feeding one vet to a up and coming guy, but you know, what are you going to do? It's the fight game. It's not a nice business. Are you in the school of thought that, uh, the champ is catching up on GSP in terms of greatest welterweights ever. Is he still going to be holding that belt after the Leon Edwards rematch? For Usman, honestly, that that Leon fight's not so easy. Leon's just really technically sound. He's a pretty big welterweight. Um, but Usman's gotten really good. And he's been so much more active than Leon. And he's had a couple five-rounders where Leon's just had the one with Nate. So I think Usman's a bit more seasoned going into this one. But, but I don't think Leon's an easy fight. I think if that fight... You know, I think the outcome of that is Usman by decision. I don't see either guy finishing each other in that fight. But now Usman's become a great champ, you know, especially since he's more adopted, like a striking style opposed to a kind of, you know, wrestling on the cage style. He's made a fan out of me for sure. You sound like an absolute student of the game. You know the sport inside out. Who's the one guy in the UFC who's the gold standard in terms of fun to watch, the way they carry themselves, the whole package in your eyes? Oh, man, that's a, that's a good question. I wish I had some more time to think about this one. Um, honestly, this, this just, it's kind of topical, but Yuri Porhoshka, I mean, just the way he fights, he's gone undefeated. He's what three, and zero in the UFC and he's already champ. I mean, he's, he's fun to watch. He's got the right mindset. He shows up on weight and he finishes every one of his fights. I mean, Yuri is like much must watch, you know, MMA. So, you know, that, that's who I choose for a quick right. answer. 
That's a beautiful choice. I like that. And I'm interested, you've racked up the fights and you've been in the game a while, but you still, you know, you're 31, right? So what is the biggest thing that you've learned from when you first got in to now, do you think, about this sport? Um, just like consistency in the training schedule is really important. And, uh, and and this is one thing that Coach Save helps me, just not to get comfortable. I mean, if, if, you're, if you're starting to like kind of coast through training or win all your rounds, you got to shake things up. Thankful, thankfully. It's been like three or four years now I found Fortis and, uh, and those are not easy rounds to win in the gym. And, and, and he's always changing up, you know, it's just, it's just to just continue to be challenged so you can continue to get better. And, uh, and that's keeping me thriving and improving every single day. It's interesting. It's probably a transition for the welterweight division with, uh, I mean, Stephen Thompson's not getting any younger. We don't know how long Masvidal's going to be around and we've got Diaz leaving as well. Who would you like to see uh, Masvidal fight next? People talking about the Connor fight. Is that the right fight to make, do you think? Connor, I would watch a Connor and Masvidal fight. Um, man, that's another good question. I'm trying to think of some of the top 10 welterweights. But, uh, you know, he never fought. He didn't fight Leon, but he's fighting Usman. And honestly, that's technically I can see Leon Edwards, you know, using a, you know, a well-rounded game to make that one a little less gritty. Um. Yeah, I never really thought about that. I'm I'm not too sure, but Masvidal against anyone who's a striker is a fun fight. So I mean, yeah, that that would be that would be cool. I would watch that fight for sure. Absolutely. And uh, you don't seem like you you have a call out in mind. You're just ready to take uh, whatever's next. But four in a row, well, that will put some stock behind you. Have you thought about who you'd like next? Uh, no. I know it's a little cliche, but I like never ever look past an opponent. And there's almost like a stigma, you know, for guys who like they have a fight book, but they already try to fight another fight. You can't look past an opponent. You can't like no wins are guaranteed. You got to like fight tooth and nail for him. So I got one guy on my mind right now, and that's Matt. We'll be tangoing on Saturday. And then, uh, you know, MMA gods be just. I, 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 I beat him up something fierce. And then I'll, I'll look to see what's next. But, but I got a big fight on my hands on Saturday. I'll hit you up with another cliche then. Uh, do you feel like a, a finish or does it really not matter in this sense? Because you, you used to rack up those finishes, but the competition keeps getting harder, right? Yeah. So I learned this when I got to the UFC. Getting finishes is not easy. In my debut, I broke the dude's nose bad with the right hand. I had a fully locked out arm bar. Dude wouldn't tap. Second fight against Muntasri, like send him to the hospital, land. I don't know how many bombs. Just couldn't get him out of there. I mean, these dudes in the UFC, they're hard to finish. And, like, I was a finisher and still am a finisher. But, uh, but man, one thing with Simmelsberger, he's he's tough to put away. He took Chaos' his biggest shots. You know, he showed good defense grappling in his last fight. So this is actually a fight I'm, I'm, I'm banking on, on just trying to win all three rounds. You know, you can't plan on a finish because if you don't get it, you know, you could have, like, you know, just, like, a psychological kind of, you know, break in the fight. So, in this next one, I'm, I'm looking to just win every minute I can win, do as much damage as possible. And, uh, and if the finish comes, great. And if not, you know, whatever. But but this is going to be a, a tough one. Let's get it. They're all tough, but you got it. Good luck with everything. And uh, congratulations on the momentum. Long may it continue. I respect you, man. Thanks for the chat. I appreciate it. Awesome. Yeah, hey, man. Thank you so much.